Okay, um, so we are going to go ahead and get started with our June meeting of the Seminole County Democratic others. I am your chair um, and we are going to go ahead and call our meeting to order. Thank you all so much for joining us today and jo joining us virtually. Uh, we all know that 2020 is a big year and um, we're, we're so happy that we have such great volunteers. We are a fully um, volunteer-based organization. We do get some support um, from the Florida Democratic Party, but as for the local county party, we are 100% volunteers. So we're very excited um, for, for everybody that we have and all of the great candidates that we have running who you're going to be hearing from shortly. Um, so I'm going to go officially call the meeting to order here. Um, and I'm going to explain uh, kind of quickly. So we have, uh, this, is, this is Zoom that we're using um, and then we're streaming it to Facebook Live. So for all of our attendees, um, what you're gonna do is, those are our attendees in Zoom, you're gonna vote on questions, just the same as we did last month, but just for anybody who's new, a question will pop up on your screen. Um, we do ask that the candidates who are not voting members, you're not precinct captains, um, do not vote um, because that way we can keep keep good track. Um, so we want to make sure that everybody's aware of that. Uh, you can change your view um, and you in the upper right hand corner. You will not be able to speak um, unless you um, unless we make, make you able to speak because the way this is set up, it's a little different than a normal Zoom meeting. Um, so if you use the raise your hand feature or type something in the chat, um, that is how we can um, that is how we can make sure you know if you have a question or something like that. But we do ask that you use the chat. Um, if you have questions, we'll be putting stuff in the chat. We'll also be putting links and things like that in the comments um, section of the Facebook Live. So feel free to comment, say hello, um, say hi to your friends, and share this video. We appreciate it. So Sue, um, do we have quorum? Yes, ma'am, we do. Perfect. Okay. So we have quorum for our virtual meeting, um, as we discussed uh, last, last month. Um, so what I'm going to do next is we're going to go ahead and do the pledge and a moment of silence. So if you would like to stand and follow along with me, again, it is a pledge and then the moment of silence. Um, so if you could go ahead and do that, it would be greatly appreciated. And please follow along with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. Um, so we do have um, our May minutes, were meeting minutes for their general meeting were sent out. Um, in the precinct captain newsletter, the PC minute is what we call it. So if our voting members could, um, Larry, if you could pull up that question and if we could have the voting members select um, yes or no. Um, actually, I think, I think I need a motion first, I apologize. Um, Sue, do you have a motion? Would you like to make a motion for that? Yeah, yeah I would love to make a motion to approve the uh, uh, May meeting minutes, please. Perfect, do I have a second? Can I second? Oh. Sorry. Marianne. Yes, you may. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay, we'll have Marianne be our second here. <laughs> so, um, and then, um, so, so we're voting on that. And then Larry, let us know when we have the votes in. If there are any concerns about the minutes, please put them in the chat. They're still rolling in, I'll tell you in a moment. Okay. Oh, we're getting a note that says the live stream on Facebook doesn't seem to be working. Okay, let's see. Let's try that one more time. It was working. So everyone hold on just a minute. Sorry about that. Facebook can be finicky with Zoom. Gosh, I think we're great last time. Okay. Let's check here. If anyone sees it pop up, feel free to put it in the chat. It's up. It is up? Mm -hmm. And it's on the page, correct? Just making, just double checking. 
No, I don't see the polling thing though. Maybe maybe that doesn't show up polling question. Sorry for the delay, guys. Gotta love technical difficulties. I can see the polling. You can approve made minutes. No, I'm not. Yes, the polling's working, but the Facebook Live piece, which we want to make is on. Uh, Facebook is up. I'm watching it. Oh, it is? Uh -huh. Perfect. Okay. So we will keep proceeding. So um, the approval of May minutes. Um, and then Larry, do we have the um, do we have the um, the answer to that that response? Well, we got we got 29, so I'll call it. Okay. So the motion carries and our May meeting minutes are approved. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not seeing it. Larry, you are seeing it on Facebook? Because I'm still not seeing it. Could, um, could I have someone um, in the comments? Someone says, still not on, on Facebook on our end. And I know our candidates are hoping to share. Larry, I'm not seeing it yet on Facebook yeah. either. Okay, I'm, I'm looking on Facebook. Larry, oh, you. I'm sorry. Oops, hang on, there's a button I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Larry. We appreciate it. For those of you that don't know, Larry Guerra, he's phenomenal and he's been, oh, yep, there, there we are. Now we're live Facebook. on Facebook. Perfect. Um, no, we appreciate it. So candidates, um, your teams are welcome to share this um, to help you get exposure. We, we are excited to have you all here today. Um, so we, we just approved our meeting minutes. Um, apologize, we had a little bit of technical difficulties. Larry Gira from Deb Palalian's campaign is phenomenal for those of you that don't know him. Um, and he's been doing a lot of work for us on the back end and with the technical piece. So we Appreciate so we, we just approved our meeting minutes. Um, apologize. Oh, we have a technical difficulty. There we go. Oh. Okay. Um, so we went through um, some of the pieces that we really needed to get through already. Um, but Sue, um, I believe you are up with the swearing in of members. Uh, yes, thank you very much. So um, today we have a couple of actions that we'd like to take. One is we would like to um, invite the membership to vote for confirming Tara Lundy as a new precinct captain joining us from Sanford Precinct 52. She is very excited to get on board with our efforts to uh, get more Democrats elected. Also, we have a few members who need to take a small step back. Um, they don't wanna leave us, but they need to convert to the associate level position. Those people are Aaron Nash, Joan Cave and Paula Reedy. So I would like to make a motion that we um, accept the new member, Tara Lundy, and uh, welcome her aboard and uh, convert the three other individuals to associate members as of now. Perfect. So Sue has made the motion. Do I have a second? I second. Ben, ben seconds. Ben Jenkins seconds. Um, and then, um, if you have any comments, put them. Please, you can put them in the chat. But go ahead, and um, you can vote on the poll that's on your screen, precinct captains. And so, for those of you that don't know, our precinct captains are our voting members. Um, we also do, as Sue mentioned, we have associate members and at-large members. Um, so those are for people who really want to make be involved heavily, but can't attend the meetings, and they don't really have that. Um, that attendance requirement. Um, so we are, um, we're, we're very excited that we've got so many excited active members um, and we are gonna continue that um, into, into 2021 um, and of course through the November elections. Okay, Larry, how's the poll looking? Good, okay, 100%. Voted yes, so thank you guys. Thanks for voting um, and, oh, and uh, turn it uh, back to, and Sue, I guess that was, that was it for you, correct? Double check. Yes. Yes, it was so much so that I muted myself. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry okay. about that. 
That's it. Thank so, you. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Um, so Sue is our credentials chair. So if you are unable to make one of our live meetings, we do ask that you email our credentials team, which is Sue is the head of. Uh, so it's credentials at semdems.com. Or if you are interested in becoming a precinct captain, which is a voting member of the Democratic Party here locally, um, you can email Sue at credentials at semdems.com um, and she'll give you a little bit more information. But basically what we do as precinct captains is we reach out to the community and make sure that we get people out to vote and we get our candidates elected. Um, so that is, that's really the, the background behind that. Um, I just wanted to make sure that you guys were all aware. Um, we do also have, um, right now, what we've got going on is anybody who wants to be a precinct captain for the 2021 to 2024 election cycle, they do need to have their precinct captain forms um, signed, notarized, and turned in. Um, I believe it's by noon tomorrow, um, which is also the qualifying deadline for our wonderful candidates. And I know they've all been working hard this week to get into the Supervisor of Elections office. But again, if you have any of the, any questions about that, please feel free to email Sue. I'm going to throw her out there as please email Sue. Um, but she's wonderful, um, and we will uh, continue to move forward with all of our wonderful volunteers and organizations. So we're excited. I did want to bring up, um, so this month, as many of you know, um, June is Pride Month. Um, so we, you know, we just wanted to make sure that we do a, a shout out to our awesome LGBTQ community here in Seminole County. Um, one thing that we are lacking, though, is we do not have an LGBTQ caucus. Um, so we don't have um, somebody organizing functions and, and places to meet um, and things like that. So if you are interested in that, um, I do encourage you to reach out to us. You can reach out to us on social media um, or through our website and just let us know if you're interested in either being a part of that committee um, or heading it up, you know, even if you're organizing it but not necessarily going to be the president of it. We would, we would love to have that if you're passionate about this. Um, so, um, okay, so we wanted to just, just mention that it's Pride Month and, you know, how excited we are. You know, obviously, um, Pride here um, in, in Seminole County and in Central Florida is, is essential, you know, as it is around the world. Um, but here, here in Seminole County, I think a lot of us, a lot of us do think of, you know, our own family and friends and, um, and, and the Pulse tragedy that happened. Um, so we, we do want to make sure that we are representing all people, um, and we would love any help that you can provide um, in supporting that movement and um, moving things forward. So we're excited about that, and things have been heading in the right direction here in Seminole County, although not as quickly as many of us would like. So we're, we're excited about some, some things that are happening in the scenes, and we'll keep you updated as, as things come up. Um, also... Uh, Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry about that. Uh, we did have a question in the chat um, going back to when we're uh, with the uh, paperwork for the precinct captain for 2021. Uh, do, would we have it? Is there going to be any confirmation going out to all of those members who turned their paper? We turned their paperwork into the supervisor. Um, um, there's that is actually a really good question. So um, I've I've let everybody know who that I received their paperwork. Um, so if if we haven't if we didn't let you know that we received your paperwork, please feel free to reach out to me um, during or after the meeting, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Me and Sue Sue has been coordinating as well. Um, as for the supervisor of elections piece, um, I can um, I'm. I'll check and see if they're going to reach out to you all directly. Um, but if not, uh, we will send out maybe a, a full list of everybody who has been confirmed with the supervisor of elections. Um, so we'll, we'll take a look at that. Um, I've been in contact with uh, the supervisor of elections office this week, um, and they've been reviewing the forms and getting back to me if there were any questions. So um, we will, we'll send out a, an announcement to those who were who were official. Um, but I believe I saw that that question came from Paul. Paul, you are confirmed. Um, I sent you an email. And so if anybody else has um, questions about it, please feel free to reach out. Um, so um, as I mentioned, precinct captains are a vital part of our organization. So thank you so much. And, and it really a big piece of that. So I want to just thank you all, all of you precinct captains, for all you've been doing, not just this year, but in previous years as well. Um, we've really gotten to, you know, we've really gotten um, Seminole County to move forward um, as far as voter outreach and uh, changes to our voter registration go. Um, I know that there are quite a few people on this call who do, um, who do voter registration 
almost daily, at least until um, COVID and the, the health issues came up. So um, I do, um, I do want to point out, you know, that we've, we've done a great job of moving things forward here in Seminole County. In fact, um, I was notified yesterday that our number of registered Republicans um, that is more than the Democrats in Seminole County is now down to 1,193. So we are, we are only about, two, we're less than 200 away from being under 1,000 voters in difference in with the difference in Seminole County. So we are on par. Seminole County that has been traditionally red is almost about to be blue. So we we definitely encourage you if you have friends or family members who you know are Republicans or who are independents, which we call NPAs, non-party affiliated voters, we definitely encourage you to go ahead and get them to update their voter registration. We do have closed primaries here in Florida, which a lot of people who are from other states don't understand. So if you are a non-party affiliated voter and you're not with either the Republican Party or the Democratic Party, you will not be able to vote in all of the races. Um, you will not be able to choose most of the candidates. You'll be able to, to um, to vote for a few, and we'll hear from some of them later tonight. Um, but we want to make sure that we encourage you, if you have people who are going to, to register as Democrats, make sure they do it soon, because we want to make sure that they're able to vote in the August 18th um, primary. So um, a couple a couple items here. Hold on, sorry. I want to back up a second. I had something else on my, my list here. Um, so the Black Lives Matter movement um, has been, you know, obviously going on for a while and come to come to a head recently. And we are obviously um, big supporters here within the Democratic Party and especially here in Seminole County. Um, so many of us um, will be out, we'll be wearing our face masks um, this Saturday. There are um, events happening in both Oviedo and Sanford this Saturday. Um, so please be sure to, um, you can check our Facebook page for more details. We'll get it on the calendar as well. Um, but uh, we, we do, if you feel safe and healthy um, and, and feel comfortable going out with a face mask on. You know, we do ask you to still take those precautions um, and stand clear of people, but there are these events happening. And obviously this is very important, especially in Seminole County where, you know, we have a history of, of uh, you know, outward and confirmed racism. So um, I do urge all of you um, to, to support the movement in some way. Um, and I hope that, um, uh, and someone said that there is also a Black Lives Matter protest in Lake Mary um, tomorrow. Um, so we're gonna get more details about that and we will put it out on social media. Um, we were having trouble finding the details. Obviously, um, these things are being coordinated by local volunteers and we appreciate all of their hard work um, because we know that it's not easy. We do it day in and day out and uh, we, we appreciate all that you do. So thank you to those of you that are organizing. Thank you to those of you that are going out. Thank you to those that are supporting from afar um, and, and protecting your health. You know, we know that, that that's important as well. So um, keep up the good fight. Um, they are asking for um, kind of nondescript clothing um, so that people can't be kind of picked out and identified separately. Um, you know, whether you, um, you know, you don't want to wear things with big logos on it and things like that. If you have a Black, black Lives Matter t-shirt um, or, or black clothing, you know, black t-shirt that you would like to wear, um, I definitely encourage you to do so. Um, for us, this, this is not, this is not a, a Dems versus Republican thing. This should be an everyone thing. Um, obviously, we do see that there are you know, more Dems involved than the Republicans, but um, we, we think that everybody should know that Black Lives Matter. So, um, yes, yeah, so we've got several um, events happening and they're posted on our Facebook page. Um, we're not coordinating them, but we are working in conjunction with these different groups and organizers. So um, next up I have, um, I wanted to announce the activist of the month. Um, and this, this, this person has been a part of the Democratic Party here locally for a very long time. Um, he, uh, in fact, his mother was even involved in the local Democratic Party years and years ago. Um, and he has been working, he was previously um, one of our state committee men. 
Um, and he has been working tirelessly to make sure that we flip Seminole County Blue. And I know he is just so proud. Um, so I wanted to thank Patrick Westerfield um, for all of his hard work. He's been notarizing forms for all of our precinct captains for the past uh, couple months um, to make sure that we are a successful team going into, into 2020. Um, so I see we've got Patrick on. Patrick, you are our activist of the month. Well, thank you very much. I'm honored and especially because so many people have been doing uh, so much um, that have won this award ahead of me. I feel really honored and thank you. Um, nope. so, thank you. No problem. We appreciate you, Patrick, and all the work you do. Um, for those of you that don't know, Patrick ran for the Oviedo City Council in 2017, um, and he has just been tirelessly pouring his heart um, and his energy um, into this organization. So, Patrick, Patrick, it's well deserved. So, round Thank of applause you. for Patrick. Um, okay, so uh, the next couple of things. So we, how awesome was it? People keep saying, go Patrick in our chat on our Zoom, <laughs> Zoom, Zoom account. So we're so excited for you, Patrick. Um, but the next thing I wanted to mention is some ways that you can get involved and you can become active. So we do have um, phone banking going on, uh, that which you can do from your home um, and you can actually train from your home. So Drake is one of our wonderful um, organizers with the uh, Florida Democratic Party and he is based here in Seminole County. And Drake has been hosting a phone banking um, um, phone banking training every Saturday at two o'clock and he's been doing it on Sundays too, but every Saturday at two o'clock, Drake is organizing um, phone bank training um, to help you support uh, Democrats um, and getting Democrats updated to vote by mail. Now, um, after the March primary, the March presidential primary, we only had about one in five Democrats in Seminole County registered to vote by mail, which it's great that all of these Democrats are registering, but if we don't get out and vote, if we don't make sure that people know that there's elections, especially like this August 18th primary, if we don't know that these things are happening, we're gonna be in big trouble come November. Um, so it's it's vital um, to get out the vote, and obviously our plan has had to change with, with COVID, um, the, with the virus going around, it's been, it's been horrible and we want to make sure, you know, first and foremost that you're safe, um, that, that everybody's staying safe. Um, if you do need any kind of um, assistance, we would be happy to, you know, help, help in any way we can. Feel free to reach out to us. Um, we, we can definitely coordinate um, getting, getting you help with services and whatnot. Um, we do have quite a few social workers in our midst and things like that. So public, public workers who are here to help you, so. Um, but I did want to say, so the big, so the big thing, if we're going to stay safe and we're not going to be able to go out and have those close face-to-face -face conversations um, with voters that we love so much, there's a couple different ways that we're going to be able to reach out. Um, we're going to reach out um, on the phone, which is kind of the first one. If you've phone banked before but haven't done Drake's training, you do have to do Drake's training in order to start um, the phone banking process that we've got going on right now. Um, so the um, phone banking training is the first piece. Um, and then the second piece is postcard. And so what we're doing is we're writing handwritten postcards to quite a few, um, quite a few voters um, and targeting them to specific areas with specific messaging. Um, so we are, um, oh, and I see a message from Craig here as well. So we, um, we are only, Craig says, and Craig is our official uh, precinct activities lead, Craig says that we are only 100 32 vote by mail registrations behind the Republicans in Seminole County. So that is huge um, because that is not where it was a couple months ago. So thank you to everyone who's been making those phone calls and um, reaching out and getting people registered to vote by mail. You can share it on your social media page, um, the direct link from the voteseminole.org website um, to, to get people signed up to vote by mail. So again, um, phone banking is an important way that we're doing this. Um, postcards and mail are things that we're doing um, to, to help get out, get out that information. Um, so those are some things that you can do to volunteer. Um, another piece that we're gonna start doing very soon um, is literature drops. So we call them lit drops. Um, but basically what you do is you drop them off some, on someone's door and you drop off information, but you don't have any contact with them. So it's just making sure that they have the information. Um, it does save us on postage, um, which is usually the most expensive piece of this kind of thing. Um, and it also, um, you know, it's also better than, 
than, than no contact, to be frank. So a lot of our voters have never had contact from someone within the Democratic Party. So we're working very hard to change that this year. Um, so those are some ways that we could use help um, for the time being. Uh, as well as organizing. If you have a local group, um, if you are not a precinct captain already, uh, we would love to have you join us if you're able. Um, and so all you would have to do again is to email uh, sue at credentials at sendems.com and explain that you're interested in that and she'll tell you a little bit more about the details um, and what all is involved. Um, so we are very excited about this. Uh, we know that we have some really great precinct captains and that this is um, going to um, this is going to, um, you know, we're going to we're going to move forward um, in, in a great way heading into November. Um, so we just want to make sure that we're doing all the things. Phone banking, I can't stress how important phone banking is. Um, postcards, we do have a lot of volunteers who want to write postcards. I'll tell you that. And that's great because we need it. We do. Um, but I will say that phone banking and having those conversations on the phone with people um, you know, we're not necessarily having, we're not having you call like Republicans, right? We're having you call either friendly Dems or people who just forgot to vote or, or things like that. So we want, we want to make sure that, um, that you have a good experience. Um, and we're, we're always here to help and do more training as needed. Um, but I know a lot of people aren't comfortable on the phone, but unfortunately that is what it's going to take to win. So we do have a donor who has um, offered to donate a $25 gift card every week for the next couple weeks at least, um, let's say through June at least, I know she's, she's offered to do this. Um, we're gonna give you a, a $25 Target gift card um, if you make the most phone calls um, in, in each week. Um, and we're gonna run it from um, Sunday to Saturday. Um, and we, we mentioned this on our last call um, and we did have um, a winner, um, a, couple winners um, so far already, um, and we'll be reaching out to them individually. But what we're gonna do is we're going to, um, we're gonna have a winner. So whoever makes the most phone calls, now there is a caveat here. You do have to have made over a hundred phone calls um, to, to be in that list. So if you've made over a hundred phone calls um, and you, you were gonna, you're going for that, if you wanna make the most phone calls from our list, um, we are going to give out a $25 gift card. And I see Kathy has dropped um, a Zoom line in the, um, in, in the chat as well. Um, so you can, you can definitely sign up for um, future trainings with Drake um, and he will also do them. If that time doesn't work for you, just reach out to us and we'll get it coordinated. So, and thank you very much to that, to that anonymous donor. We do appreciate it. Um, so be sure to make those, make those uh, phone calls um, and possibly win that $25 gift card. Hey, if you win it every week, that's great. Um, our first week doing it, the, the person that came in second place was second by nine phone calls. So it was really, it was really close. Um, and I'm glad that people were, were taking us up on that and moving forward. Um, a couple other things. So if you um, have someone that you know of that wants to do Bright Futures volunteering, um, right now I'm going to have you, um, you can email um, drake at semnems.com. Again, he is coordinating some of that, that outreach. So um, if you have someone in your family or maybe you're watching right now um, that needs vo vo uh, volunteer hours, um, please make sure um, that you email us. You can either email us directly in any way or you can email drake at semnems.com and he'll get um, people set up. They are, in addition, looking for fellows um, for the Florida Democratic Party's um, outreach this, this year. So that makes a great resume item if you're potentially looking at, um, you know, a, a future in, um, in politics um, or just anything. It shows that you're really a go-getter. So definitely check that out. Um, I also um, wanted to mention um, that we, um, we do have um, we're gonna be planning out some upcoming digital events. We do have our auction um, coming up uh, and um, I will explain a little bit more about that in a minute. So um, we do have, um, we, we did cancel our gala um, during, we announced it at the last general meeting that was held via Zoom and Facebook Live. Unfortunately, we have had to cancel our gala. The deadline for refunds has passed um, and I'll let Scott explain a little bit more from the treasurer's report, but I wanna thank all of you who, um, 
who made those donations and who contributed your tickets even though we weren't having a gala. Um, so thank you all so much. Um, we did not have to give back that much money. Um, we are still working on recovering the funds um, from the hotel, but we are, in, we are hopeful that we're going to actually get all of our money back from the hotel where we initially had it. Um, so we're working hard, but that money is going to be vital to winning in November. So um, thank you all so much. Uh, we really do appreciate it. Your um, your program for the gala, as well as a, a small little small little thank you gift, um, will be going out. We're expecting them to be put in the mail next week, so you should be receiving them probably in the next two weeks, I would say. Um, and so we are excited, and we're we we are so grateful to all of our sponsors um, and everyone who who really made this possible and who is making. Um, who's making this so, so wonderful. Um, even though we're not really having an event, um, which, you know, we're all really bummed about. We all love getting dressed up and, and hearing some great speakers. You know, we had Val Demings scheduled to speak, um, which would have been great. Um, but we are working on coordinating some other events that might be uh, beneficial to everyone involved as well. So um, we are, like I mentioned, we're looking at having some upcoming digital events. We'll be having some fundraisers and precinct captains, keep an eye out. We are looking at having a precinct captain happy hour, not a mandatory one, just a fun hangout, um, grab a coffee or a beer and, and chat. It's been a long time since we've seen each other and I know a lot of us really miss, miss all the people in the organization. So um, keep an eye out for that. And I do want to announce, so um, Jean is one of our wonderful volunteers um, and a former uh, activist of the month. And so Jean is working very hard on collecting our auction items. And so we are going to be, um, we are going to be uh, asking for more auction items. So we are moving our silent auction that was supposed to happen at the gala. We're gonna move it to an online auction um, and we should be announcing the date of that in the next few days. There will not be a ticket price to enter, but everybody can, can make their silent bids about on our auction items. We'll be promoting what events are in there and whatnot um, shortly as well. We'll have pictures and things like that so you'll know what you can bid on. And that's just one more way that you and your friends and your family can help support the cause um, and our fight to get great Democrats in office this November. So um, I did wanna remind everyone, and I'm sure Scott will let you know this as well, um, but recurring donations are kind of our bread and butter. If you are able to you know, write a one-time check for $100 or $500, uh, we really appreciate it. We do, I wanna tell you that. Um, but if you're not able to make like a big, a big donation like that, we, we do ask if you're able to, to set up, you know, a five, 10, $25 a month recurring donation. Um, that's, that's how we, that's how we sustain ourselves as an organization. Again, we are volunteer funded, um, volunteer organized. Um, so we want to make sure, you know, we're putting every dollar to good use to get Democrats elected. Many of you saw our, our budget last time around, the last time um, when we showed it and walked through it. But Scott will walk through some of our financials uh, because we do want to be as transparent as possible. Um, all of our items are, um, all of our stuff is public record as well. So um, you will, you'll definitely, uh, your money will definitely be put to good use. Um, we've been working really hard. Um, one other thing that I wanted to mention is that we have ordered Biden yard signs. So we're going to be getting those in shortly um, and we will be selling them, well, not selling, we'll be asking for a donation in exchange for those. Um, we are going to have a page up where you can purchase one and then we're hoping to deliver it like one day a week, we'll deliver them to all of the homes. Um, in addition, we are going to be starting to open up our office hours at our new Longwood office. We're not gonna have the grand opening that we were hoping for because we don't want that many people in um, all at the same time for health reasons. And you are required to wear a mask if you are inside of our office. Um, so please make sure to do that. We do have hand sanitizer and things like that in our office. Um, but we are going to have those yard signs in our office as well, as well as um, some great yard signs for our local candidates. Uh, we are asking for a donation in exchange for the, um, 
the Biden yard signs. But if you are unable to, we, we do understand. We just ask that you do volunteer um, maybe an hour or two, something like that in exchange. So we, we want to get these signs out and get them going. You know, we say that yard signs don't win elections, but you know what? People really love them um, and they do provide awareness. So um, we're excited about that. Um, and I think I mentioned, so the office update, so we, um, so please stay tuned, check our website, semdems.com, for the latest office hours, because people are very excited to go in there. We are kind of limiting um, how many people, how many um, volunteers are in there at a time. Um, so if you do want to drop in there, though, and phone bank or something, we do have a couple different rooms, um, so people can be very spread out. But our goal is to, um, our goal is to keep everybody safe and healthy. So um, next up, I do have Scott, our treasurer, who is on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to share um, our summary of accounts here. Um, and then Scott, I'll let you uh, take it away and I'll share my screen here. All right, can everybody hear me? Yep. Wonderful. All right, hey everyone. Um, so we began the month of May, as a reminder, we're going through May, not the early part of June. Uh, we began the month uh, with just under $48,000 in the bank. Uh, as you can see there, the 47,668. Um, the, the very quick version right here at the top, uh, we added in $2,358. We spent 36,93. So uh, just about $1,100 more than we brought in. So we ended the month at 46,333. Um, moving down a little bit, as you can see the contributions um, around line items 23 to 25. Uh, we did hit a big milestone this month for the first time since I've taken over. Um, there we go. For the first time since I've taken over, we've surpassed $1,600 in one month for recurring contributions. So thank you, everybody. Uh, we've been teetering between 1520 and 1570 for a year and a half. Uh, so it's, it's really awesome to see this. It kind of came out of nowhere. Um, it's really appreciated. Uh, we, we've, we've moved into our new office. The rent is a little bit higher, which we talked about last quarter. Uh, so the, the, this is a great sign of things to come. Um, as far as non-recurring contributions, as you can see, uh, we had 728 total dollars come in. Um, just to give you a little explanation, you can see this yellow bar here that we didn't have in previous months. Uh, there is um, a trade-off between what comes into ActBlue and then what actually hits our bank account each month. Um, ActBlue does charge a small fee uh, for the service, and there's also a time delay. Um, so in short, the numbers that I just went over, that 1646 and the 728, that is what was actually donated to the SEMDEMS in May of 2020. And what you're seeing below is the money that actually reached the bank account. Uh, in May, it ended up being very close. Um, the contributions were 2358. Um, excuse me, the contributions that hit the bank account were 2358, and the contributions that were donated were 2374. So it was only a $20 difference. Um, if you look at past months in, in April, for instance, there was about an $800 difference. Um, so I started doing this in May, just so that we can all be a little bit more transparent and understand the money that is actually coming into the account a little bit more easily. Um, so of the 2358 that did come in, 2158, as you can see just below the yellow, that 2158 represents all money that came in on Act Blue, And then below that, the $200 were one-time cash or check donations that were uh, physical payments, not through Act Blue. So that is how that's comprised. Um, and the 175 was one gala sponsor. That may be me. Uh, and the 448 were stamps for SEMDEMS. So anything that is not in that 600-ish uh, dollars was a recurring or a non-recurring Act Blue contribution. Moving on to our expenditures for the uh, for the month. We've now reached month two of having normal rent uh, at our new location. So that was $1,113, you could see right at the top. Um, other big guys for the month was bulk mailing at $388. Um, 
for the 2020 gala, we did have at line 66, we had $200 in gala uh, refunds. There should be a little bit more in June that, that obviously haven't hit yet, um, but it should be a three figure number in the month of June. And as, as Brittany said, the, the deadline has passed. So we, we, we have a rough expectation uh, of where that final number will be. It's gonna be right around $1,000 total. And the other biggest expenditure for the month was right at the bottom um, for the new office. We had some construction on the bathroom making it ADA compliant. It was a, uh, a one-time charge and that is uh, a reason that we actually had uh, quote unquote free rent for a couple months earlier in 2020. Uh, so it does wash out there. That's, it's not just an extra $1,100 expense that we're out on. Yep, exactly. You could see right there that in March of 2020, uh, we did not actually have to pay any rent at all because of the work that we did to improve that space, make it handicap compliant. Um, so again, to sum it all up, in May, we started with 47,668. We brought in just under $2,400. We spent uh, just under 3,700 and we ended the month at 46,333. Great, thank you so much, Scott. We You're welcome, guys. And for those of you that don't know, when he mentioned that his contribution might have been the one there, Scott is also a realtor <laughs> and his ad will be in our program that we are sending out. Uh, Call me anytime. It's <laughs> <laughs> a little plug for you there. Um, and uh, the next up, um, what we're going to do now is it's time for what you guys have all been waiting for. It is time for our candidates. Um, so candidates, um, when I um, call your name, if you would, um, and I'm just gonna go through the whole list just to verify, make sure we don't miss anybody. Um, I know there were a few people that um, we're not sure if they were gonna be able to make it tonight, um, and one person who told me they weren't going to be able to, they have a conflict. Um, but first up, and I know that she is on, um, Miss Nancy Groves. Hi, good evening, how are you? Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay, great. Hi, I'm Nancy Groves and I'm running for commissioner in the city of Sanford for District 3. And I just want to thank the Sembems for the opportunity to uh, speak with you tonight. Thank you very much. Um, when I win this seat, I will be the first Hispanic female commissioner ever elected in the city of Sanford. So to me, that's very exciting. Um, I'm excited to see new opportunities too that lie ahead since I'm sure a lot of you know we've had a lot of changes in the city of Sanford just this last week. So um, to tell you a little bit about me, I moved to Orlando in uh, 1983. So I've been in the Central Florida area for a long time and um, had many businesses. I'm a successful business person, um, a, an entrepreneur, a community influencer, an author, a teacher, and um, I've been a real estate broker in Seminole County for the last 13 years, so many of you might know me from that. Um, you know, I want you to know that I really know what it's like to sacrifice for your business, so I'm very much in tune with the needs of small business and entrepreneurs, but um, you know, I've also managed a large five, Fortune 500 company, so I know what it's like to manage large budgets as well. So um, I have confidence that I have the skills needed to lead um, in the commission here in Sanford. Um, I've been a resident of Sanford since 2016. And um, as I was doing research about wherever I lived in Sanford, I've only lived in District 3. So, you know, that was kind of funny. And um, so I've seen a lot of changes, some good, some bad, but, um, you know, I'm very positive about Sanford. And you know, I chose to live in Sanford, um, so I'm not going anywhere. And uh, you know, I'm very concerned also that it's a new world since uh, COVID, and uh, we must adapt. A lot of us, you know, it's been very hard for us to adapt to our new world and how we have to live, how we have to go to school, and how we have to do business. So I'm uh, ready to meet those challenges. Uh, again, I love Sanford, I love my community, and I want to make our community stronger and less divided. And that is really my core message. Um, the time has come for us to have honest conversations 
and to work together to be more inclusive of each other. And um, there's no community, if you look at the word community, unity is in it. So there's no community without unity. And uh, we are one here in Sanford. So I'm asking for your support financially and I'm asking for your vote. So please reach out to me at uh, info at grovesforsanford.com if you want to have a conversation or send me an email. I'm always open to talking with you. So remember, no unity without community. And uh, we are one. Thank you for your time. Perfect. Thank you so much, Nancy. Um, Thank you. Really appreciate it. So for those of you that don't know, so Nancy is running in Sanford, like she said, in District 3. So if you live, you do have to live in the district. It is districted to vote. So if you do live in that district, the Semnums are supporting Nancy. She's the only one we are supporting in that race. Now, that is an August election. That's that's not that's not yes. November. And it is a non-party affiliated election. So Nancy will not have a D next to her name, but we support Nancy. So we want to make sure that you do too and that you tell all of your friends who are in the Sanford area. Yes, great. Please visit me at uh, grovesforsanford.com. <laughs> okay, I need your donations to make it happen. Thank you so much. Love it. Thank you, Nancy. Okay. Nancy mentioned that you're a realtor too. I mentioned Scott. That's right. <laughs> the next time somebody asks me who who do I know who can help sell their house, I'm gonna I, I remember. <laughs> there are a lot of us out there. <laughs> okay, and then um, next up we do have Chad Albritton who is running in Castleberry. Hi everybody, how are you doing this evening? Thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to be here tonight. My name for uh, those who don't know, it's Chad Albritton. I am a candidate uh, for Castleberry City Commission seat four. Uh, I believe that representative, representative democracy works best when it empowers its residents and welcomes diversity to the table. I am a lifelong working class Castleberry resident, first generation college graduate, who was lucky enough to be able to scrape up the money to buy his grandmother's home and move back into Castleberry to start a new generation of family here. I'm a supporter of well-funded schools, strong workers unions, and ensuring we have diversity at our seats of power. And I'm running to make it truly easier to live and work in Castleberry and, and even do business in Castleberry. For me, there are too many families here in my neighborhood who struggle to keep their lights on, pay their water bills, put food on the table. And to me, these are failures. Failures I believe our city leadership can address. If given the honor of being elected, I have plans to ignite our local economy with improved transportation and lessen burdens on our working class residents. I have plans to ensure our children and grandchildren have access to clean air, clean water, through sustainable development that prioritizes the needs of all of our residents. And it doesn't seem like a simple thing to do to some, but transparency, uh, inviting people to participate in meetings and motivate them through making it accessible. Better meeting times is a way to do that. Video releases of meetings is another way that I believe my city could improve there. Um, but on the campaign side of things, I am happy to report that in just a few weeks from us soft launching our campaign, we have been able to raise over $4,000 from 50 different contributors. So I just want to give a big shout out and thank you to the SimDim members that have already contributed to the campaign and shown that they believe in the work I'll do as the next Castleberry City Commissioner. Uh, big shout out to Frank, Sue, Drake, Kurt, Sal, and Mr. Castleberry himself, Mr. Lee Mangold. So thank you all. We have an expert team. We have a kick-ass campaign plan and we're, we're doing the work to win. Uh, we've been incredibly busy getting our plans together as far as reaching our 16,000 registered Castleberry voters, but I'm confident that with your help, we can deliver a working class victory for our residents. Um, please donate what you can to the campaign tonight. We do have our next deadline, of course, coming up Friday. And please sign up to volunteer. 
if you live in Castleberry, please even consider casting your vote for me. I hope to earn it come this August 18th. And then of course, you know, if we can win a strong win this August without a runoff, that means we have even more time to dedicate for that necessary presidential election come November. But uh, please get involved by visiting our Facebook, Chad for Castleberry. We're finalizing our website and planning on a huge digital campaign launch in the next coming weeks. So keep an eye out there. It will have entertainment and more. It's going to be a blast. And really just once again, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak with you tonight. Uh, let's make some waves. Great, thank you so much, Chad. And again, if you do live in the city of Castleberry, you will be able to vote for Chad on August 18th. Um, the early voting happens August 8th through 15th as well. And those vote by mail ballots usually go out about 30 minutes prior. So thank you so much, Chad. Um, thank you. We're actually gonna have uh, Patricia Sigmund up next. So Patricia, if you would like to unmute. Thank you very much. Hello, Sendems. I am energized to be among so many amazing people who are fighting for the future of Florida and our country. Thanks to all of you. Um, it's really an honor to be here. I'm Patricia Sigmund. I'm a mother. I'm a small business owner. I'm a voter protection leader, and I'm an employment lawyer. And for over 25 years, I've been standing up to fight for people who've been mistreated or fired because of their age, their race, their sex, their disability, their national origin, whistleblowers who've been fired just for doing the right thing, people who've been sexually harassed or abused, people who couldn't get their unemployment benefits, and people who weren't paid what they were owed after they did the hard work. And through it all, what I've really been doing is standing up for the people over the powerful. And that's why I'm running for Florida Senate District 9, because it's time our government put the people first in the workplace, in the classroom, in the hospital waiting room, in the halls of our Capitol, and in the laws we make there. And the truth is, if the people are going to move forward, it's up to us. And I am ready and honored to stand up by your side and fight that good fight for the people. And why is it so important that we win Florida Senate District 9? Well, we are at a crucial tipping point in Florida. For the first time in 20 years, we have a moment where we can grab onto and change the entire structure of power in our state. This is a vital moment and we must win it. So what's at stake? Redistricting is coming up. We have 17 Democrats in the Florida Senate right now. When we pick up the two targeted flip seats, District 9 and 39, that Senate Victory is backing, including this one, we will have 19 Democrats in the Florida Senate and that is the number we need in order to hold on to fair districts and be able to protect Stephanie Murphy's district boundary, all of the congressional districts for our US House throughout the state of Florida and the, the seats in the Florida legislature. And why else is it important? Because Jason Broder is wrong on all the issues we hold dear. And we cannot afford to risk the idea of Jason Broder representing District 9 in the Florida Senate for the next four years. What can we accomplish together? We can fully fund our public schools and stop the money that's flooding out to the charter schools and the for-profit schools. We need to make sure that that lottery money that was supposed to be extra is extra and not a replacement for the money that our government should be putting in. We need to bring more money into the public schools so that we can raise educator pay across the board and give the children of Florida the future that they deserve, the best world-class education that they can get. Those are our future leaders, our future business owners. They are the future of our country and we need to invest in them. We need to expand Medicaid 
It brings thousands of jobs to Florida for health care, billions of dollars into our economy, insures nearly a million more people, and it helps stabilize insurance premiums for those of us who are fortunate enough to have insurance. This is a no-brainer. Jason Broder will not do it, but we can. And remember when they got close to flipping their chamber in Virginia, that's when they got Medicaid expansion. And we can do that with 19 Democrats in the Florida Senate. We can take action on preventing gun violence. We need to protect our environment and our rural boundary, which is being threatened. And we need to protect clean water for generations to come. So come and join me, unite for change. Let's make this crucial turning point moment together. Please go to patriciasigmund.com and volunteer and support our campaign. We have been very successful so far. We've raised over $325,000 in the time we've been running this campaign, despite the pandemic. And we are uh, going strong every day, big phone bank, lots of activity. And we really just need everyone to get behind this campaign and make sure we make this crucial flip. Thank you so much. And please join with me Patricia Sigmund for Florida Senate District 9. Thank you so much, Patricia. We appreciate it. Um, so I should mention um, that we are going to explain. So we are going to have several candidates on that are in a primary. I kind of just dove in with Patricia before um, we got going here. So what we're going to do for all of our primary, um, our candidates that are going to be on the primary ballot is we're going to give them five minutes. Um, they are all aware and they were told this ahead of time. Um, so Patricia was the first one for Senate District 9, um, and that is our state Senate District 9, which is super important. Second up, who is running for the same seat is Mr. Rick Ashby. You, Rick, if you could go ahead and turn on your camera, you're good to go. Hello. Hello, some Dems. It's a good day to be a Democrat. Uh, glad to see everybody on the live call. And uh, also the people that have joined us uh, on Facebook Live, welcome. My name is Rick Ashby. I'm running for State Senate District 9 in Seminole County in Southwest Volusia. My background is in project management and engineering, so I do understand complicated issues and how to address them. My platform is progressive because those are the only policies that solve the drastic problems that we face and will move us forward into the 21st century. I believe the Democratic Party must be the progressive party and act in a unified way to move this state and our country away from the policies of division, economic inequality, criminal justice inequality, and big money control of our political system. From the beginning my campaign, of my campaign back in 2017, I have been advocating for single payer health care, $15 minimum wage, community policing reforms, eliminating private prisons and private school vouchers, supporting unions, cleaning up our lakes and rivers, implementing state water monitoring regulation, Improving public housing construction and oversight, issuing to solar and wind, along with electrical vehicle infrastructure. The longer we wait to fully embrace our responsibilities as leaders and informed voters, the more civil unrest and unnecessary deaths we and our children will have to endure due to social inequalities and climate change. We have to embrace progressive reforms and bring that message to all our Florida communities and the nation. When we do that, our state will take its rightful place in the top three of our great nation instead of the bottom 10. We can make our state admired as an example of progress instead of the object of late night comedy routines. So why do we have to embrace significant change now? We do not have the luxury of waiting any longer. My friends, silence is violence. It is not enough to be against police brutality and racism. We must call it out, stand up, and protest in solidarity until changes are made. Many of us have acceptable health care insurance and our families have access to care and medications. If you remain silent about the millions of Americans that do not have insurance and the thousands with cancer and heart disease, that are turned away from hospitals every year for the diabetics that can't afford their medications, 
you are accepting and approving their deaths. Silence is violence. In the words of Martin Luther King, of all the forms of inequality, injustice in healthcare is the most shocking and inhumane. In the end, we will rem we'll remember the words of our enemies, not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. If those that have means or high paying jobs do not support higher wages for those at the bottom, they condone an unfair system. If systemic racism and economic disenfranchisement exist and you say nothing, you are part of the problem. If you understand the danger that climate change poses and you do not vote for candidates that support the Green New Deal and, and the Energy Innovation and Carbon Dividend Act, you have condemned the children of the world to societal disruption, the likes of which none of us has ever seen. For these and many other reasons, the progressive platform holds the keys to our success. When we take care of all our citizens and allow them the means to support their families and educate them, we all benefit from their productivity. When we invest in the future, we all win. That's what good leaders must do. I would like to be your advocate in the state legislature. I'm not interested in being part of a Senate club or compromising my principles for special interest money. I just want to be part of fixing our broken state political system. My website is rickashkeyforsenate.com, and of course, I would like your support for my campaign. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak with you tonight. I will leave you with the words of Theodore Roosevelt. A great democracy has got to be progressive, or it will soon cease to be great or a democracy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rick. We appreciate it. Okay, next up we have Mr. Alexis Carter, who is also running for Senate seat nine. Oh, you have to unmute. Oh, there you go. Perfect. Perfect. Good evening, Sem Dems. Hope you're all doing well. My name is Alexis Carter. I'm running for State Senate District 9, which again encompasses all of Seminole County and parts of Southwest Volusia County. This has been quite the 2020 um, for all of us. Um, and I think it's really given us a moment to reflect on not only how we're doing as a country, but as a state and in our, in our households. You know, whenever you have a, a virus or a sickness, it's an indication that, you know, something may be wrong. And we've seen that as soon as the virus um, started to spread, one of the things that were impacted the most was our economies. Um, you know, here in Florida, we rely so much on tourism and hospitality, and it does a lot for our domestic G GDP here. But we have to think of, of ways to, one, bring other higher paying jobs here that are more sustainable so when crisis hit, we don't take such an economic downturn, and two, improve the broken unemployment um, system that's put in place by the Republican legislature. You know, there were laws that were passed which intentionally made that system so difficult to pay out for unemployment claims. And as your state senator, that'd be one of the changes that I would advocate for the most. I'm your homegrown candidate. You know, I'm a product of Orange County and Seminole County Public Schools. I attended Lake Brantley High School and went on to UCF and also got my law degree at Florida A&M College of Law right here in Orlando. Um, I'm an attorney by trade, but I'm also a law school professor and I'm an American soldier. I served seven years in the United States Army as a judge advocate. And in addition to you know, advising commanders and in leading troops, I was overseas in Afghanistan helping Afghans put together a, a government to help self-govern themselves. So I've, I know the law, I know how to interpret the law, and I know how to apply the law. It was while in the United States Army that I decided, you know what, it's time for me to come back home, to take my skill set and bring it back to the community that invested so much in me. You know, it's time that we really put our money where our mouth is and improve the pay that we're giving to our teachers. There's no reason why Florida is ranked number three in population, but teacher pay is around 46 or 47th of the nation. You know, Seminole County is a model, if you will, of, of, of education in terms of 
the scores that we get across across the country. But there's so much more to education than just scores. We got to make sure that we're teaching our kids and molding our kids to be the future generation. As a father, I want to make sure that my daughter has the capabilities of going out there. And if she wants to go to college or she chooses something else, she has the skill set to to go ahead and do whatever it is that she feels that she wants to do in his lead in life. We have to make sure that we're expanding Medicaid as well. There's no reason why we're a state in a country of so many resources. However, we have we see it time and time again how so many people are cut off from proper health care and we need to do more with our housing. Florida's growing, there's no doubt about it. I believe last year was the number one or number two visited state in, in the whole country. And what are we doing here to make sure that we're creating affordable housing, not just for our current residents, but for those who are to come? I'm that fighter. I've proven with my track record, not only um, in the United States uh, Armed Forces, but here locally that I can get the job done. When I started off as a public defender, I represented the least of our community, folks who couldn't afford their own attorneys, but wanted to make sure that they had their rights represented in court. And that's what I do on a day in and day out basis. I make sure that the job gets done. Our campaign's doing very, very well. We started off in October, November timeframe. I'm not backed by any big political interests or special interest groups, but yet we're steamrolling ahead. I have confidence that if you vote for me for state Senate, we can stick it to the Republicans and make sure that our interests are being heard. Again, follow me on Facebook at AlexisCarter2020.com and also on Instagram at AlexisCarter2020. Together, we can be the change that we want to see here in the state of Florida. It's up to us. This is the time for change. The time is now. We have to make sure that our will is being heard and that we are going to push forward for change. There's so many things that we can point to right now that need our help and need our attention. We're gonna need that leadership coming out of this economic downturn. We need to make sure that there's oversight, accountability, and that we're making sure that all laws are being forced across the board. Right now, as it stands, we're seeing our nation cry out for leadership, and there isn't any. We're seeing our state cry out for leadership, and there isn't any. When's the last time you've seen the governor even make a, a public comment? He's missing. I want to be that voice, not just for District 9, but for all the state of Florida, because I believe that we could set the tone and be an example for all of the state. Vote for me August 18th. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alexis. Um, we do have, um, we have two more candidates that are running for Senate District 9. Um, I wanna just verify, as far as I can tell, um, Mr. H. Alexander Duncan is not on the call. Is that correct? Doesn't look like it. I just wanna make sure I'm not missing him. Okay, um, and then next up, we do have Miss Gertie Remy. See? Hello, everyone. How are you? My name is Gertie Remy, and I'm running for Florida State Senate District 9. I am a nurse and a case manager by trade. And as a case manager, I assisted in obtaining resources for those that were in difficult situations. As also as a nurse, we've learned to problem solve. I was focus oriented, um, goal oriented. We had to deal with measurable intakes. We were developing a plan of care. All of that coincides with our life as being a human and uh, the life of people. So for example, we did a lot of risk assessments and risk assessments are um, measurable goals. And what is at risk? Well, I'll tell you what's at risk. 2019 and 2020 was a very, very productive year for the trifecta in Tallahassee. Let's say, let's start with the education department. In 2020 and 2019, Senate Bill 7070, which is the voucher program. With that bill, we saw that the state Senate and the reps wanted to spend millions of our taxpayer dollars and to use it for private schools and for religious schools. 
what they did is that they defunded the public school education. And all, we already had a struggling public school system and took that money out. So one of the first things that I do want to do is see if we can revise that. It's going to take a joint effort. It takes both sides, although this bill was voted along party lines. We also, it also made it easier for teachers to get certified um, through the charter programs. Bible courses were covered. I'm a religious person, however, not many are. And they should not have our public taxpayer dollars invested in that. So we saw the public school system get it. We also saw um, different laws that were created, right? We saw um, uh, low, the low socioeconomic laws for students. We saw the Title IX for the Constitution, which is supposed to be the annual education appropriations. Um, it's supposed to be based on cost inflation, um, the growth of students. So public school system is one of the first priority for me when I get to Tallahassee with your vote. I also want to state with um, the Florida State retirement system. That's, uh, this, since 2008, this was the first time that it was fully 100% funded. Since then, we have not. So we have teachers, educators, um, professional allies that are worrying about their retirement funds. Um, we have bills that were made in there, bills such as The, um, I'm sorry, <laughs> the, we had bills for the union and bills such as the SB 703, which was the guardian bill that armed teachers. And, in, and at that time I was there and saw that most of our uh, professors and teachers and the students do not want that bill. However, our state senate did pass it. Going on to the union, I'm a big proponent of the union. And I have um, SEIU 32BJ, because I'm a, a product of union, right? There's laws that could have been passed to help against discrimination. So for example, we have the SB 90, and SB meaning Senate bills, because that's the, the, the place that we would be in, which is a discrimination of labor and employment. And that bill died in the um, commerce and tourism. What it would have existed in is to prevent employers from discriminating against favorable employees. It was gonna provide civil penalties, but it, the bill died and it didn't go forward. The SB 106, which is instructional personal salaries, the Florida Teachers Fair Pay Act. And it was supposed to be funded at a level with a certain minimum of annual salaries, as well as um, setting a standard for the department for annually um, minimum salaries and raising their salaries up to par. So these were bills that were really good. But then because we have 17 Democrats and 23 Republicans in Tallahassee, despite the bills that we were going to create to help promote our education department, they were not passed. Going on to the gun laws, right? So in Florida, in 2019 and 2020, we saw that there was many, um, the gun laws that were created, such as campus carrying bill, the license transaction, the waiting period. Um, we wanted to have protection against child care facilities from people carrying um, weapons in there because there could be mental health issues, divorce issues, and, and those were issues that we wanted to have protected. We also wanted to have restrictions on where and when a person can carry a weapon. We wanted to have a bump stock ban, um, restrictions on gun purchases. Those were bills that the Florida State Senate, the Republicans said no to. So as a Democrat, hearing the voices of our, um, especially with Pulse and our students that were shot, we want to be able to protect these students, protect our residents. So be, when I go up there, these are bills that were introduced in the past that failed, that I would like to work and co-sponsor with people to see if we can reintroduce them, especially the gun stock bill. And having a good background check, a waiting period, like I said before, there's no reason to have a gun that fast. And if the person needs it, then we definitely need to, um, to figure out why and allow them to have a waiting period. We also saw LGBTQ bills that were against the LGBTQ community. There were about eight of them, right? They were a perfect attack. I'm sorry, I've, I've done past my time. But all in all, what I want to say is that when I go to Florida State Senate, 
I will work with Republicans that would like to create legislations that are going to um, help our community. It does take an effort. I'm not just a dreamer or a person who is um, into like the unreality. I am a realist and I believe in working with the other side if the bills are going to work for our community. However, I don't take federal fun I don't take funds from big companies. I am trying to become a, a candidate through small dollars because I don't want to be in anyone's pocket. I don't want to not vote yes on bills that are good or vote no on bills that are bad. And I am very sorry for being so organized. Only I've worked six straight 12 hour shifts because of coronavirus. I have been in and out of the hospital for working. And um, I wanna thank you though, but just know that despite everything that's going on, whether it's Black Lives Matter, um, whether it's the coronavirus, that as a community in Seminole County and District 9, we want to bring people together. Um, I'm a policy person, but I'm also a person that deals with people's issues and I see them daily. And I see that when we read these legislations and they do not apply or they allow for us to have our, our citizens' rights taken away, we have to stand up for that. And we have to stand up for healthcare. We have to stand up for what's going on. We need to have unity. And with Gertie, the I am going to ask you to wrap it up. So we, are, we are over our five minutes. So if you want to say one last piece. Yes. Please go to Gertie Remy, the number four Florida.org. And hopefully we do this again. And I won't be on three hours of sleep and I'll be more organized. But in the meantime, just know that Gertie Remy for Florida.org that I will be working with you um, because I live in the community. I believe in you. And um, yeah, thank you very, very much. Thank you so much, Gertie. We appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so again, we um, these are the candidates for Senate District 9. Um, so Florida Senate District 9 which does include all of Seminole County and then a little sliver of Volusia. So if you live in Seminole, you're a registered voter in Seminole, you will be able to vote for one of these candidates on your August 18th ballot. Um, so again, those candidates are Patricia Sigmund, Rick Ashby, Alexis Carter, H. Alexander Duncan, and Gertie Remy. Um, so please be sure to uh, you know look into to them, see which ones align with you, um, and make sure to Make sure to vote, most importantly, make sure to vote in the August 18th primary. So um, next up, we are going to dive into House District 28 um, with uh, Ms. Pasha Baker. There are two candidates running for this seat. Um, so Ms. Pasha Baker, you will have five minutes. All right, awesome. Good evening, Sim Dems. How are y'all today? I do pray all is well and everybody is safe and healthy. It is a pleasure today to join you as a qualified candidate um, for District 28, which encompasses the northeastern part of Seminole County, taking half of Sanford, um, a little piece of Lake Mary near Lake Mary Boulevard, our rural areas, Geneva and Chiliota, um, and Midway, and taking that back down to Winter Springs and Oviedo is my district. I'm a third generation product here of Seminole County. Um, and I went to Seminole County Public Schools and a graduate of Seminole County Public Schools. I am the daughter of the first black teacher to integrate Lake Mary Elementary. So little known fact about me. Um, and my father was a city bus driver. So I know all too well about the struggles um, of teachers, of my neighbors, of my family, about what they went through. That's why I'm running for office. Seminole County has a time in history not like any time before. In 2020, I would be the first woman and first person of color ever for this seat. We can no longer talk about change if change is here. Last week, I did an interview for Spectrum News 13, comparing the killings of George Floyd to what we had here in Sanford, to Trayvon Martin. 
both of those killings made the national news. However, here in Seminole County, we started the Black Lives Matter movement, was started at the murder of Trayvon Martin. During that interview, I got a lot of comments saying how well I did, how well I spoke, and what were the issues that needed to be addressed. And then it came to one of my family members, my aunt, who said, Pasha, you didn't do this well enough. You didn't do that as well. You see, Seminole County Democrats, I'm like that aunt. You see, we got a lot of fancy banners going around with Black Lives Matter movements on them, but I can't find any Black Lives in your campaigns. Now is not the time for fancy poster cute rhetoric. Now is the time for action. Now is the time to walk it like you talk it. That's why I'm running for this office. And that's why I'm running as a primary candidate. For all too many times in Seminole County history, we have had candidates that could break the barriers so we could stop saying the word first. Now is the time we get behind those candidates so that we can lead the state in doing what's right and make a change on all fronts. There's a burden that we carry. And a lot of our races, there are first. For Senate District 9, that's the race that would be the first person of color. And if a woman is elected, a woman. A lot is Seminole County, as you heard for Nancy Groves in her race. She would be the first Hispanic woman on the Sanford City Council in 2020. In 2020, this county is over 120 plus years old. It's time for the Seminole County Democrats. It's time for Seminole County to walk it like they talk it and to be about the action, not just talk about action. Our campaign stands for a lot of things. Our campaign stands for proven leadership and service. There's no doubt within any mind that we can come and prove our service to our community. There's no doubt about our service in business, hailing from Wall Street, as well as only several, several small businesses, including a nonprofit today. Proven. And there's no doubt about the love I share for Seminole County, the Sim Dems, and all the people in it. I want to make this declaration, and I want to be very clear. We're still in a fight. We're still fighting for equality. We're still fighting for justice. And not only was there a pandemic, a national health care emergency for COVID-19, there was one for racism as well. There were two pandemics. This would send so many signals that Seminole County has not just evolved in for a Democrat and Republican race, but a race to erase racism not just within one party or the other, but to send a clear message. I want to stand up and to make sure that when I see a young child that says, I remember when you ran for mayor or when you ran for house district, they say, I'm next, because we can only be what we see. Our campaign stands for environment, of course. 
I live um, by Ms. the St. John's Miss Tasha Baker, I hate to interrupt, but you are. Am I? That is my time. Finishing up. Wow. <laughs> you know what? I am never usually all done. <laughs> so if you want to say one last thing, close it out. Baker.com. You'll find a lot of COVID-19 resources, a resource that we just introduced today. If you are a business owner in the city of Sanford, there is a $15,000 small business grant that just became available a few hours ago that we have been releasing. Um, go to our Instagram, Pasha Baker, Facebook, Pasha Baker, any of our sites. And I wanna thank this body for their support as always. All right, y'all have a blessed evening and stay healthy. Thank you, Pasha, we appreciate it. So next up, we do have our second, dis our second candidate here um, for House District 28. It is Dr. Lee Mangle. Hey, yeah, good evening, Sam Dems. Uh, for those I've not had the uh, pleasure of meeting yet, allow me to briefly introduce myself. I am running for House District 28, as Brittany had mentioned. Um, my name is Dr. Lee Mangle. I'm a, a father, a husband, a business owner, cybersecurity expert, um, an adjunct professor at UCF, um, and of course, candidate for House District uh, 28, right here in Seminole County. Uh, I'm a Central Florida native. I graduated from Lake Brantley High School. I've got uh, two daughters in Seminole County Public Schools. Uh, after graduating and uh, finally went through school, got all the way, all the way through my doctorate in cybersecurity, um, founded several companies in the cybersecurity space, uh, founded and managed a, a nonprofit where we work with students and professionals across the state uh, to help build out the cybersecurity workforce and to, to help people get certified in jobs. And prior to that, um, I spent about 15 years working for a defense, working as a defense contractor, um, developing and managing uh, high tech uh, training and cybersecurity programs for the Army, the Navy, uh, Intel agencies, and a lot of other government entities. Uh, so I grew up here in Seminole County. I, and I've, you know, I often tell the story, I've seen this area grow from the orange groves and, and corner stores uh, that, that used to be here uh, to what you see today. And I watched the community grow, and I've seen the new industries flood into this area. But I've also watched the people that have been left behind, and many of whom who have shared their stories with me over the last three years that we've been campaigning. But, um, you know, before I get into policy topics, I, I want to start with three words that have been weighing heavily on my mind, and I know all of our hearts. Black lives matter. As a community, we're grieving. We are outraged. I am outraged. And we all should be outraged by senseless killings of black Americans. But as an educator, I understand the importance of continuous learning in my own life. I will never understand what it's like to be judged, detained, or murdered because of the color of my skin. But I'm here to listen and to learn as your neighbor as a citizen, as an advocate, and as your future representative. We must finally put an end to the systematic problems within our schools, our criminal justice systems, and our healthcare systems. It's for this and many other reasons that I support increasing funding for our public schools and in eliminating our high stakes testing that it often serves as a barrier to success for disadvantaged children. I support expanding Medicaid, ensuring that every Floridian especially our marginalized and vulnerable communities, can receive the health care they deserve, especially while we battle a global pandemic. I support sweeping reform of our criminal justice system that does not include the further militarization of our police force. And, you know, as we work toward these goals together, we must also ensure that we protect our natural resources, protect the rights of workers across the state, fix our broken election laws, and ensure that everyone who wants the opportunity to succeed has the opportunity to succeed. So how do we achieve all these goals? We achieve them first by, by talking, talking to our neighbors, listening to understand, relying on real science and evidence, by ensuring that decisions are made by the people they impact and not just the powerful. We need leaders who are willing to have conversations with their neighbors instead of taking orders from special interest groups. You know, we're at a turning point 
in history where we must decide what kind of community we want to live in. For those I've had the pleasure of working with over the last three years, you know I show up and you know I do the work. I'm here to listen, to advocate, to put in the work that'll make our community a better place. I need your vote on August 18th to make this all happen. Let's work together and let's make a difference together. Thank you all so very much for having me. Thank you so much, Lee, we appreciate it. So again, these are your two candidates um, who are running for Florida House District 28. Um, so next up, we're kind of gonna leapfrog around here a little bit, um, but we did have, um, so County Commission District 5. Um, so we had um, Mr. Purnell Bush, who is unable um, to be here tonight. Um, he did have a conflicting event, um, but he let us know. Um, and then the second candidate as well um, is Mr. Mike Cleland, um, who is, I believe, also just double checking that he is not on the call. Um, I just wanted to double check that I didn't miss him. Um, okay, so um, again, Purnell Bush and Mike Cleland for County Commission District 5. Those are the two, two Democrats in the race, so you'll need to make that decision again on August 18th. Next up, I do have Miss Tracy Kagan, and I just saw her uh, beautiful face there. She is running for Florida House District 29. So Tracy, you could turn back on your camera um, and unmute. You stop my, my thing. Oh. You're not allowing me to go on. Oh, hold on a second. Larry, can we oh, there go? I am. Perfect. All right, hang on. Okay, can you see me? Oh, oh Tracy, can you, can you say something? We can't hear you. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear, can hear you now? Can you hear me now? You can yes, hear me now. Although I think you're screwed. Oh, there you okay. go. Perfect. Go ahead and get started. All right. I'm Tracy Kagan. How are? You? How is everyone? I'm back. Okay. This is for the election 2020, the most important election of our lifetime, the most important election from the top down to the bottom. I'm running for the House District 29. You know, I'm a single mother, three daughters, a criminal defense attorney of 30 years, and more importantly, I ran in the midterm election and lost by a razor thin margin of 1%. I got involved and ran because of Parkland. My daughters and I went down south, we marched in solidarity, and when I came back, I learned that my elected officials' response was to arm the teachers. So at that point, I said it's not gonna work for me. That answer is non-responsive. I come from a family of teachers and my children go to public schools and I decided to run. I never ran for office before. We got a team together in six months. We raised $100,000. We knocked on a lot of doors and we almost did it. We lost by 1%. So what's gonna make it different this time? I'm gonna tell you right now, you. Everyone sitting out there in TV land, as they say, is gonna make this different. And why? because it's very important to have a leader that's accessible, transparent, and advocates for the people that they represent. Not someone who is never around. I don't see my opponent anywhere. I don't hear from him, see him. He's like a UFO sighting. My entire goal is to get to Tallahassee to represent interests from my people from the state of Florida. I believe it's so important. We are not having adequate representation. Look at the unemployment fiasco that we're in right now. We're in a pandemic, we have healthcare issues, people's issues are not being addressed. We have public, public education that is trying to be eroded and trying to be disseminated by the Republicans. Well, it's really, really time. It's time for change. It's time for the face of Seminole County to be blue. And it's time to be blue because we are the party of inclusion. We are the party that is not racist. We have to strive to end systemic racism. I'm a criminal defense attorney, 
and I'm on the inside sometimes, and I see things that are so inherently racist. My entire goal is to get to Tallahassee, to bring parity to Tallahassee, to make sure that my colleagues up there are helped out and to be a voice for the people in the state of Florida, the voice of the people that are voiceless. I think that's the key to public service. Public service is representing those who cannot be heard. That's it in one sentence. So I implore each and every one of you, join my team, be a part of my movement, kaganforflorida.com. And here's the other ask, a very important ask because we can't canvas like the old days. So we need mail and we need digital, which costs money, that ugly word money. I need you all to reach deep, go to my website and press that donate button and get me to Tallahassee this time and get me on that bus. I promise you we're gonna turn the I-4 car to blue and in turn, turn Florida blue. Help me help all of us. I'm Tracy Kagan, I'm running for the house. Okay, that's it, Britt. Did you get it? Thank you so much, Tracy. We appreciate it and we're excited to have you running again. All right, I'm excited to eat my dinner. Anyway, yeah. yes, go eat dinner. You can turn off I love you all, I miss you all, and call me if you need me. Bye-bye. Thank you, Tracy. Thanks, hon. Okay, so next up we do have Miss Christina Renteria. Tracy, you can go ahead and turn off your video. That's fine. Christina, just be sure to unmute yourself. Can you hear me now? Hi. Hi, my name is Christina Renteria, and I'm running for Seminole County Clerk of Court and Controller. Originally from Spain, I have lived here 35 years. I graduated from FIU and I am a certified public accountant for 25 years. If you're wondering what the clerk does, uh, you will visit the clerk's office if you need a marriage license, a passport, jury duty, traffic tickets, records for civil and criminal cases, small claims, self-help center, child support, divorce injunctions, foreclosures, <laughs> amendment for voting rights, and if you are denied a homestead assumption. Okay, the uh, clerk um, is also the uh, comptroller and auditor for the county. And uh, we are, you know, independent uh, constitutional officers and I report to the state auditor general. Um, we are officially in a recession. So I'm promising you transparency. Uh, why am I running? I'm running because the county has an 800 million budget. And I just want to make sure that your taxpayer money is well spent. You know, I'm the president of the uh, Democratic Hispanic Caucus in Seminole County, and I also want to be an advocate for the Hispanic community. So right now, I'm just asking for your vote. Go to my website, www.christinaforseminole.com, and let's go Democrats, okay? So stay safe, everybody, bye. Thank you, Christina. Okay, next up, we have Ms. Lynn Moira Dichter herself running for tax collector. All right, let's see. You cannot start your video because host has disabled it. Oh, Larry, can oh. you make sure that she's a panelist? Okay. There we go. <laughs> Yippee! Okay. Hello. Hello, friends. Um, my name is Lynn Moira Dichter, and I am running for Seminole County Tax Collector. Um, I am, this is a candidacy of first. We have talked about this before. I am a first-time candidate. I will be the first woman ever elected to the job of Seminole County Tax Collector, the first Democrat in more than 50 years. And I could never have made this journey without, well, some of you, you know, more importantly, uh, Brittany having talked me into running for an office uh, almost a year ago this week, right before the 4th of July last year. What we have discovered after um, doing a little bit of homework is that Seminole County deserves better than the Seminole County tax collector who is currently the incumbent. I am I'm, I'm passionate about doing the right thing and I'm passionate about following the rules and we have a tax collector who flagrantly um, violates those rules, whether it's pulling someone over pretending to be a police officer or writing some anti-Muslim things all over his social media page. But the hardworking taxpayers of Seminole County and the hardworking small business people of Seminole County deserve better treatment than that. We need a well-run office 
We need, I have been watching Seminole County politics for 35 years as a news person, as a reporter, as a talk show host from a bird's eye view of 35,000 feet. I have managed million dollar budgets for nonprofits and I have managed my own personal budget down to the penny. But the number one question I continue to get is, what does a tax collector do? Well, it's pretty easy, it's right in the name. I am the collector. If you wanna get a driver's license, you put your money over here, I send it to the DMV in one bucket, I'll call it. If you wanna pay your property taxes, you again come to my office, I then send it from that bucket to the county commission. The, the second most popular question, of course, is can you reduce my property taxes? Can you reduce my taxes, Moira? Well, the answer is, at first I thought it was no, but now I realize it's yes. Because if I, I will run and I can run a tight budget, what that means is at the end of the budget year, the excess fees that are left over go by law to the county commission to hold your property taxes the same or to perhaps increase services. There are a lot of things about this candidacy that are woefully lacking in the current incumbent. Um, one, accountability, transparency, ethics, and basic dignity. All of these things, we, Seminole County can make the change in 145 days. That's how long it is until the election, but who's counting? Um, I think it, we need somebody in there with a good dose of common sense, and I'm hoping that that's me. Um, the um, website is moira2020.com. You can email me, moira at moira2020.com, and see us on any social media that you prefer, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. There's that. I need your help with volunteering, whether it's postcards, phone banking, or of course the financial contribution. So any way that you can help would be greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, Lynn, Moira, Victor. We appreciate yes. it and we're looking forward to getting you in that tax collector seat come November. Thank you. <laughs> Next up, we have, we have Ms. Deborah Pulalian, who is going to make a wonderful supervisor of elections for Seminole County. Thank you very much for introducing me. And, um, you know, one thing I wanted to remember to say in the very beginning is that the SEMDEMS website has all of the Democratic candidates listed. So if you can't, you know, can't write down everyone's web address, just go to SEMDEMS and it's under uh, the elections tab and then candidates tab. And we have a lot of hardworking volunteers who made sure that happens. So look me up there and you can look up all the candidates. Uh, a little bit about myself. I am a data analyst at the Institute of Internal Audit. Uh, I, I am my survey data. I do it full time. And I have a master's degree in mass communication. So the two things the supervisor of elections needs to do is manage data. That's the voter registration records and results of an election, which are a lot like the results of a survey, which is my primary job right now. And they need to communicate to the voters. Uh, so those are my, my two skills that I intend to put to good use. Uh, my priorities as supervisor of elections would be access to voting. That includes early voting at Seminole State College, prepaid postage for vote by mail, early voting hours that work for working people, so more than eight hours a day because you can't get there if you work eight hours a day. Um, uh, a better communication, that means a better website, that means access to information in Spanish, especially by phone. Uh, which is woefully lacking. So if you call now, you get to wait 30 seconds before you get the Spanish option. And the only option you get is to look it up on the website. So it's, it's not the accessibility that people deserve. And my third priority I want to mention is election security. And to me, that, that means, it means making sure you um, uh, oh, hacking from oh, foreign policy. I apologize. Uh, Larry, could we have you mute? Mute Lynn Victor real quick. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry about that, Deb. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Oh, it looks like Deb's muted now too. Sorry. Deb, could you unmute yourself? <laughs> I think we muted everybody. Oh, Larry. Unmute yourself, Deborah. Deb. Tell her again. She can't hear I am Perfect. unmuted. We can hear Deb now. I am unmuted. So I was talking about, I have four priorities, uh, access to voting, clear communication, election security, and using resources responsibly. And that means that when you spend money, you make sure it directly benefits the voter and it doesn't, you don't spend on anything else. 
So a um, couple things we're busy with right now. We are going to be at the Oviedo Black Lives Matter event. We'll be doing voter registration and I'm there as a human being because we all need to support this. And, I, and I'm 100% sure everyone on this call is. So, and I'm also hosting uh, Amendment 4 Forum uh, to let everyone know the new guidelines for registering voters. They are the law right now. And that means that uh, people who have felonies in their past can register to vote even if they owe money. Most of the time, there's, very, there's very, going to be very few exceptions. So um, thank you very much always for your support. Um, you can look me up at my website, www.debforelections, number four. Dot com and that's the same for my social media. Thank you. Thank you so much, Deb. Um, next up, we do have um, Kimberly. And Kim, if you could remind us all how to say your last name, it would be greatly appreciated. Um, and Kim is running for the county commission. Hi, everybody. Hi, Brittany. Kim Bukite. I'm running for Seminole County Commission District 3. And uh, honestly, how to pronounce my last name is my number one frequently asked question. So if you can picture a little ghost saying boo, flying a kite, you will have it just right. So thank you guys. It's great to be a part of this movement to turn everything blue, not just in Seminole County in the state of Florida and beyond. I think we all know how important this year's elections are. I'm a newcomer. This is my first time running. So I've, and it's late. I don't want to take too much time talking. I just want to introduce myself and um, say that everybody else did a great, a great job covering the talking points. And there's not a lot to say. I got involved, um, I became an advocate, a citizen advocate for certain issues. And as a member of the public, I realized that the only way to change the decisions that are being made is to change the decision makers. And I made um, a point to step up and put my money where my mouth is and run for office. Um, I'm a professional land surveyor. I've been in Central Florida since the mid 1980s working hard. Uh, I formed my own business in the early 90s. I still operate it today as a 100% woman owned business. And um, I'm having fun with the campaign. I'm really enjoying meeting everyone. I'm enjoying the support that I'm finding from unusual places and brand new friends. And it's really exciting. And I'm having so much fun. I don't know if you can see these adorable buttons and magnets that we have and our stickers that say vote Kim Bukite for Seminole County Commission District 3. And um, I just noticed today, late in the day, that there are two very strong Republicans that are going to duke it out in a primary, and I'm not going to mention any names <laughs> just now. I think everyone can check on that for themselves, but I have a really tough battle ahead of me, no matter who comes out of that primary, and I would appreciate your consideration, your support, but more importantly, I think we share some common goals. And one of the, those goals is to restore trust in government. I think we all have that job to do in front of us this year. And um, the issues of respect and accountability are very important to me. And I'm gonna bring that to the Seminole County Board of Commissioners. And I think it's been lacking um, in some cases from the experience that I've had personally. So thank you so much. If you have any questions, you can contact me. Kimforseminole.com is my website, and I am freely accessible on Facebook and all the other ways you can find me. So thank you so much. Good night. Thank you so much, Kim. We really appreciate it. Kim Bukite, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I'll remember that. We've got Pool Alien and Bukite. <laughs> so. Two thumbs up. I'll keep it in mind. Thank you so much. Yeah. So it looks like I'm double checking here. Um, next up, we do have Representative Joy Goff Marcel, who is on. Um, I heard she was having some. Oh, oh, someone said she's on. Double checking now. Um, Joy, if you are on but not a panelist yet, um, please raise your hand. Oh, yeah, she, yep, she's listed as uh, Richard Marcel Jr. 
So Larry, if you could make her a panelist, that would be greatly appreciated. Yep, it looks like she has been added and she could have the ability to um, unmute and turn on her camera now. Perfect. And for those of you that don't know, um, we helped get Representative Joy Goff Marcel elected um, in 2018. It was her first time and she is running for re-election and I'm so happy that you are my representative. So off to you, Joy. Okay. I, am I on now, finally? <laughs> yep. Great, thanks. Hi, um, as, thank you so much Simdems and thank you, Brittany and Ben, for having me. I give the Simdems the credit for having me have this position right now. I am Joy Goff Marcel, running again for Florida House District 30. I've been up there two years fighting for public education, for the environment, for small business, for affordable health care, for home rule. I believe that local decisions should be made locally. Now I am going to be facing off again with the same opponent that I ran against two years ago and defeated by a six point margin, but he has raised almost $50,000 in the last month. So I need to start raising more money. I'm, I know that I can still beat him because of people like you. And I just was reminded today that Seminole County did something that has never been done in modern history. They defeated a man that was going to be the Speaker of the House. And that, I really, I didn't know that piece of history, but that's, that's amazing. So I know with Seminole County behind me, I can be kept in the house. We brought Joy to the house and now we want to keep Joy in the house. I have an event coming up this Sunday from three to five. We're calling it Spread the Joy Sundays to keep Joy in the house. And it's going to be a phone bank run by my campaign manager, Derek McKinley. And we also have another event that I'm going to be attending tomorrow. I don't know if you know about it, but it's a children's march at Lake Lily. And it's at 10 o'clock in the morning and they're going to be wearing masks and practicing social distancing, but walking around the lake to show children um, how to be activists and how to fight for those that are the vulnerable among us. Thank you so much. Please help my campaign either contribute or come to our phone banks. But I love your support. I need your support. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Representative Joy Goff Marcel, and we're so happy to have you on. And we've really appreciated all the hard work you've been putting in in Tallahassee um, these past two years. Um, I know that you are making a difference. And, you know, we always think, oh, you know, what could one little vote make a difference? You know, what could, what could one little vote or one, one change do? And, you know, we saw it, we truly saw it with you um, this, this time around in the House. So thank you so much for your service. And, we appreciate yes, it. and we have the chance of getting three more. So I'm so excited about that. Yes, we'll keep you going for, for four, four cycles. Let's, let's, <laughs> um, so we're going to get you reelected um, in November. So we're excited about that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Larry, um, there is, um, we do have Veronica King um, in the attendees list. Could you add her as a panelist, please? She is up next. Ms. Veronica King is running for school board. Um, I want to make sure that she gets switched over to being a panelist so that she can speak. Perfect. And share her video. Okay. Um, and Veronica, it looks like you are unmuted. Um, if you want to turn on your camera. Oh, and now you're muted again one more time. <laughs> Perfect. We can see you now. Okay. Okay. Am I speaking now? Yes, you are good to go. Okay. Well, I'm Veronica King, and I am running for Seminole County School Board District 3. And I'm asking the residents of Seminole County District 3 to soar high 
with uh, the students of Seminole County Public Schools with a vote for me as their next student uh, advocate. Um, I believe that I do have the voice that would speak for them and I have the heart that would care, serve, and fight for them as well. Above all, I have the integrity to represent the leadership to the highest degree of honesty that was strategically uh, planned for the success of Seminole County Public Schools. And my goal is to secure a shared space of success for all students. Um, a little bit about myself, I was born and raised in Florida, attended Florida schools all my life, and um, I want to see Seminole County Public Schools succeed. I graduated from Florida State University, and I do believe in good quality education that sets a path of opportunities um, in higher education for our students. So you see that education is the root of my experience, and I do have a track record of forward progression, being an entrepreneur and a published author. I'm a wife, a mother of two adult children who also attended Seminole County Schools. Um, I have have over two decades of public service work with a personable and friendly leadership with a hands-on approach to addressing the needs of our community as well as our students with solutions and lasting results. Um, as an advocate, um, community activist and um, advocate, I champion the needs of the students and the families within District 3. And as a spokesperson, I believe that I can negotiate and, and close um, the deal. And what I mean by closing the deal, we get the work done. Um, I'm also a servant leader and advocate for families in the community. And I have been proven as a leader with knowledge of government um, through my current ex uh, employment. And my platform, that's just a little bit about me, but my platform is leveraging partnership with the faculty, students, stakeholders, as well as community agencies. I just really believe in a shared space of contribution where everyone can sit at the table and feel a sense of belonging and contribution. And I believe that this will allow for students to um, have the academic advances that are made available to them. I believe it's gonna also um, provide leadership development along with incentive programs is something that I wanna look into. And um, having access to enhanced diverse practices within administration, including hiring practices as it relates to administration, faculty, school board, and executive leadership. Another one of my platforms is addressing the social determinants of health because I believe uh, this will remove or minimize barriers and hindrances in the classroom uh, as well as in the school system. So I do um, advocate for physical and mental uh, well-being with the students as well as teachers addressing um, some of those health disparities and inequalities. Um, and I believe that they can be addressed through interventions, counseling, um, conflict resolution, de-escalating, and also um, some coping skills, among other things. Um, I would also like to um, enhance structures and policies that provide transparency and accessible information to parents with children with special needs. Um, in addition to those types of structures, I believe in um, improving poor testing performance for our students. And I think a lot of that will be um, improved upon as we begin to address some of the social and um, the social needs of our children as well. One of the other platforms is identifying family and student resources, I believe, especially with a lot of our children who are um, homeless, that don't have food and shelter. Um, I believe in advocating for them to provide quality education with resources such as food, books, school supplies, and also technology, especially with us having um, this virtual act, um, schooling that's taking place now and um, to include funding for after school programs and tutoring. Um, I have many different affiliations from the Health Equity Advisory Board here in Seminole um, County. Uh, community Advisory Committee in the town of Eatonville, uh, where I work at, along with the Healthy Eatonville Advisory Team, uh, Orange County Democrat, uh, Democratic Black Caucus former member, as well as the National Coalition of 100 Black Women. And so th with the many charities that I do and the advocacy that I do in the community through nonprofit organizations, I really feel that I can advocate for our students and, and their parents, as well as for Seminole County Schools, and making sure that we secure a shared space of success for all students. So that's a little bit about me and a little bit about my platform. Um, 
Today I qualify, so I am officially a qualified candidate. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Ms. Veronica King. We really appreciate it. It was nice to nice to get to see your face. I know um, we did have three new candidates um, on the call tonight. Um, three, uh, well, I think we had four, but um, three that actually filed since our last meeting. So thank you. Oh, wow. Okay. Good. <laughs> so um, just a quick reminder. So we are supporting um, Miss Veronica King, um, as well as Nancy Groves for, um, so Veronica King, again, is running for school board. Nancy Groves is running for Sanford City Commission. And Chad Albritton is running for Castleberry City Commission. Now, again, it's a Quick reminder, these are going to show up on your ballot as non-party affiliated races. So that means that these candidates really need your help and they need you to vote all the way down the ballot because they're not gonna show up as Democrats on your actual ballot. There's not gonna be a D next to their name. So you're gonna have to know, you know who you want to vote for. It's not gonna be as easy as just checking D um, all the way, all the way down the down the box there. So um, please, please, please make sure that you vote all the way down because um, we really want to make sure that these candidates do get elected. Amen. So thank you so much, Veronica. We appreciate it. Thank um, you. She was our last candidate um, of the night. Uh, we did try to ac accommodate um, any candidate schedules um, that happened, but of course, you know, there's. There's always, um, there's always a variety of things that happen um, that we, we can't always accommodate all of them, but we certainly try. Our goal here is to make sure that our Democrats get elected. Um, so that is what we, what we want to do. Um, I do wanna share one thing with you um, before we, we adjourn for the night. Um, let me, I know it's been a long meeting, a little longer than, than usual. Um, I wanna make sure it's not loading right. Hold on a second. Um, I can it up if I need to in my email. Oh, there it is. Okay, I'm going to share the screen here so that you can see this. Okay, so I wanted to show you um, some changes. So Daniel is our data chair and he is phenomenal and he's been working very closely with Deb Pulalian as well um, to check out the numbers. So I wanted to show you this to show you how far we've come. Um, we we have worked very hard in Seminole County um, since, especially since the 2016 election when we had this surge of energy. Um, and these numbers in front of you here um, explain how many new registered voters have registered in the different districts, in the House districts in Seminole County. So that bottom line there, that is the total number of increased registered voters for each party um, in Seminole County since the 2018 election. So we have increased a total of 7,876 new Democrats since the 2018 election. So I just wanted to show you this to show you the direction we are heading. Um, again, we are only about 1,100, um, a little over 1,100 um, Democrats short. I actually helped someone get registered today as a Democrat who switched from an NPA, an, an independent um, voter. Um, we call them NPAs, non-party affiliated voters, but there is a definite surge here and we can make this happen. Um, we are going to get all of these wonderful candidates that we can elected in November um, and we're going to fill all of these seats. So we have, we have worked so hard and I just want to thank you all for all of the effort you all have put in over the past four years. Um, the reason we had the candidates on tonight is because the vote by mail ballots will be going out about a month before the August 18th primary. So we wanted to make sure that you got a chance to see them. There's also early voting happening from the 8th, um, I believe it's the 8th to the 15th, correct me if I'm wrong, Ben. Um, but we are, we're so excited to have such great candidates and to be able um, to, make, to make this change happen here in Seminole. Um, we're here at the right time with the right momentum um, and the right people. So thank you all so much. Uh, ben, did you have anything else to chime in? No, just once again, thank you for everybody who's been working hard in the Seminole County to uh, make sure that we get candidates that um, vote for us, that lead for us, and that um, serve us and work for us as constituents and not special interests. Um, for everybody who's up there running, thank you so much for stepping up. I think the only thing crazy you've been trying to run for office in a pandemic is maybe running a local DEC, but that's beside the point. Um, but again, thank you for getting up there. Thank you for putting yourself out there to try and lead us and support us. And for everyone out 
out there who may be coming in late or wondering about this, you know, understand as we're seeing day in and day out in all of these elections, early, like your local races matter. What's happening and the changes that are happening are not being done in Washington. They're not being, they're being done in the state level, they're being done in the federal house. And while we need leadership that we do not have in Washington, you know, we can make changes at the city council, at the county commissioner, and at the state house. So it's up to you to make sure you are voting for and supporting candidates on those levels. And when you say, screw Trump, I'm voting for Biden, you can't stop there. You've got to go down the ballot the rest of the way to make sure you have people from the top to the bottom that'll support you. So once again, thank you guys so much for everything that you do. Thank you for it. And Madam Chair, I make a motion that we adjourn the meeting. Oh, um, one more thing, one more thing before the motion. Um, <laughs> so um, just, I wanted to say thank you again to all of our candidates for being on tonight. Um, and thank you guys um, for running for office. This is really hard. Um, I always tell candidates, this is not gonna change my life for you to run for office. I mean, yes, I'm excited about it, but this is gonna drastically alter yours. And all of these people have, have put their blood, sweat, and tears um, into their campaign. So thank you guys. Um, if you are wanting to run for office, I know I just sold it so well by putting all that in there, but if you would like to run for office or you know someone who should, be sure to reach out to our campaign chair, Kyle Hopkins. Um, you can email him at campaign at semdems.com. Reach out to him directly and he'll help you learn to how to set it up. Um, if, you want to, if you're thinking about it in future years, we can get you paired up with a campaign that's a good fit. Um, because we want to make sure that we're building the bench for this next, this next generation of leaders um, within the Democratic Party. So um, again, there is still time actually for some of our municipal elections. So those city elections, there's still time um, to, to file. So be sure to reach out to Kyle. Um, and even if it's not this year, but you're thinking about it in the future, definitely uh, reach out to Kyle at campaign at semdems.com. Um, and Ben, you made your motion. Um, so do we have a second? Oh. I second that motion, Sue Jenner. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you, Sue. Um, and if everybody could vote, I assume, yes, it looks like we still have four. Uh, we might still have four. Um, I will double check real fast. That is a good question because we have, yes, okay, so we have 30 attendees. Yeah, we should be. Yeah, um, we have quorum. It's fine. <laughs> perfect. Okay, um, so if you guys could make that vote to adjourn the meeting. Uh, Brittany, beforehand, I think Brittany, uh, Catherine just raised her hand. I don't know if that was just a motion or not, but. Oh. Oh, she put it down, so I think we're good. <laughs> okay, she might have been seconding it. Okay, and Larry, are there results in? Perfect. We have um, adjourned the meeting officially. So thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. Um, we, we will let you know about future events, um, digital events, but again, stay safe, stay healthy, um, and thank you. you know, make sure your friends and family are voting the whole ballot so we can get these wonderful candidates elected. Good night, everyone.